we are talking about taking pictures with digital cameras of the sky. The simplest form would be a camera on a tripod, statically placed, no movement with the stars. One can use point and shoot, but we'll be talking about DSLRs, digital single lens reflex cameras. So to take celestial pictures, one needs a camera. And we're talking about a DSLR, which has removable lenses. Therefore, you can select a focal length appropriate to the field of view you'd like to take. Additionally, you want lenses which are fairly fast, a low F number, which means more light for a unit time of exposure. And of course, the camera itself has various shutter speeds built in it, up to usually about 30 seconds, but you can go to bulb and cause the exposure to be much longer. However, the Earth is turning during this time, and so you'll have to do some experiments to find out how long a given lens focal length can show a, an image of the sky without appreciable movement of the stars. Let's talk about the various objects that we may image with a static camera. The brightest, of course, is the sun, and you never try to image the sun without appropriate filtering for safety purposes as well as what the features you want to see on the sun. And of course, special filters like hydrogen alpha can really give detail that you can't see uh, with white light otherwise. The moon is also quite bright in any phase for that matter, and it will take only snapshots to, to get, you'll have to find out what the appropriate exposure depending on the phase and the lens. And the, some of the bright planets, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn can be taken with just a second or two of, of imaging. But when we get down to the dimmer objects, we need to keep this kind of photography to the brighter ones, such as bright galaxies. And the Andromeda galaxy is one favorite of everybody. It's in fact seven times as large as the moon, the full moon. You can take various types of bright nebulae, like the Orion Nebula in the Sword of Orion, and star clusters, both open and uh, globular star clusters. And of course, occasionally a comet will come by, and that can be taken in just a few seconds exposure. There are other phenomena closer to Earth, in fact, in Earth's atmosphere, like aurorae, which uh, appear in more northern latitudes and during uh, high solar activity, which is what we have this year, particular year, the maximum solar activity, 2013, of its 11 uh, year cycle. Also, there are artificial devices such as satellites, which are whirling around the Earth all the time. And quite frequently in wide field views, you will see a satellite trail cross the field of view, or maybe even multiple ones. Then there are special satellites, uh, communication satellites called iridiums, which depending on where you're located and the particular angle of the satellite, you can have an immediate brilliant flare called iridium flares. And if you know these can be determined, uh, appropriately predicted for your location and have your camera set in the right position and take that event. So to take celestial images with a digital camera, you need to know your equipment. You need to know how the camera operates, how to change lenses, how to set the focuses. You also need a red light so that you can find these buttons and dials in the dark. Also, when you start out, you want to keep a log of your activities, of what you have taken, how long the exposures are. You learn by doing, and by keeping the log, you'll find out what really works and what doesn't. So, pay attention to the detail, and with experience, you'll become an expert celestial photographer.